verse number 25, and I'm reading from the New Living Bible on this morning. Amen. I want to look at verse number 25. Amen. Amen. Y'all pray for me. Y'all pray for me. I'm trying to keep this arm, this shoulder still. Amen. Amen. Look what it says. Verse number 25. It says, look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the path. Verse number 27 says, don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Amen. You may close the book. I want to talk or teach this morning from the simple subject, how to handle the distractions. How to handle the distractions. How to handle. Father, bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. How to handle the distractions. The Message Bible says, keep your eyes straight ahead. Ignore all sideshow distractions. How do we handle distractions? We live in a very interruptive society. We are constantly being interrupted. Now, especially in this digital age in which we live, we are constantly and consistently from the aggressive marketing interrupting you with ads on top of ads. And then we have to deal with uh, digital pop-ups at every turn. And, and now, I don't know if, if I'm the only one who have noticed, now you can hardly visit a website without a request to receive notifications. It's everywhere, it's everywhere. And, and not to mention the number of interruptions attached to your cell phone. <laughs> Interruptions, I mean, interruptions after interruptions, interruptions. I grew up a little old school. I'm, 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 I grew up old school. And, and, and Sister Terry, I, I remember, I remember the, the old phone system. I'm not talking about the mobile. I'm talking about the old house phone system. You know, we, we, had, we, had, we had one line. One line. There was no such thing as call waiting. So you didn't, there was none of, none of those things. And if somebody was on the line, you got a busy signal. That means they, they were busy. You could not interrupt them. You could not disturb them. That means you had to check on them at another time. And I remember there were many times that mama would just take the phone off of the hook. Because she did not want to be disturbed. She did not want to be bothered. She did not want into any interruptions. Mm -hmm. And we now with these mobile devices, with our cell phones, we are constantly being interrupted. Now, 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 I have just about turned off of every notification on my phone. For the simple reason, I can't get nothing done. I can't complete what I have because of all of these notifications. And I just decided I'll check it when I check it. I'll see it when I see it. And if I didn't see it, oh well. Some interruptions are necessary. Like emergency calls things that you may need uh, to know or things that you may have to handle right away. Interruptions, there are some that are necessary. And, and, and interruptions are really supposed to be temporary moments. It's supposed to be something temporary, while other interruptions are simply distractions. And you've got to understand when it is an interruption or when it is a distraction. Somebody say distractions. 
Distractions draws your attention away. Distractions divide and sometimes and or confuse your mind. Distractions delay you and often stop you from reaching your goal. Distractions will drive you to quitting. Somebody say distractions. Distractions are all around us everywhere we go. Distractions come from out of nowhere. They are like pop-up vendors. You are not looking for them, but they just happen to pop up on your way to wherever it is you are going. How, how often, however often in life, um, the distractions we face, hear me, are initiated by our own attractions. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. I, I probably I can't finish all of this today. I can't I already know it. I'll pick it up at another time. But most of our uh, distractions we face are simply because of our own attractions. The enemy cannot tempt you with something that you are not attracted to or have a taste for. That's why we were used to tell the young folks, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Because once you develop a taste for it, it's hard to let it go. I got some grown folks that they, they, they realize a little later in life, you should have just left it alone. Because now it's hard to let it go. It'll disturb you in your sleep. It'll wake you up. It'll come in from out of nowhere. You can be minding your business. James 1 and 14 says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and entice. Somebody say distractions. They come in three main forms. Somebody say distractions. Number one, people, 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 people will distract you. Mm -hmm. People will distract you. People will stop you or try to block you from doing what it is that you need to do. People will distract you. People will take you off course, take you off your goals, take you off your mindset. People, 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 fickle people, uh, jealous people, envious people, 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 people that ain't doing, excuse me, people that are not doing anything. Uh -huh. They'll stop you, people, people. Y'all remember Sand Ballad and Tobi uh, when, when Nehemiah was building the wall and they said, hey, Nehemiah, come on, come on down and meet with you. Meet with you for what? People, people will distract you. People will distract you. But not only will people distract you, the cares of life will sometimes distract you. The cares of life. The cares of life will sometimes come your way to distract you. If, the, if it's not the refrigerator, it's the stove. If it's not the stove, it's the car. If it's not the car, it's the HVAC system. If it's not the HVAC system, it's the lights. It's something. It's the gas. It's something. Something, it's something, it's them ninjas on my job. The cares of life. That's why Jesus told, told them in Matthew 6, he says, you have to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and everything will be added unto you. So people will distract you. People, people, the cares of life. Can I give you one more? The devil. Mm -hmm. Satan will try to distract us, which is why Peter told us to be sober, be vigilant, because the adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Somebody say distractions. Beloved, distractions don't look like distractions until they have finished distracting you. And it's sometimes when you're on the other side, you will realize that it was a distraction. Now, if you don't separate yourself from your distractions, your distractions will separate you from your goals and the life you want. If you don't separate yourself from your distractions, your distractions will separate you from your God. 
if you don't separate yourself from your distractions, your distractions will separate you from your family. If you don't separate yourself from your distractions, your, sep your, your distractions will separate you from other significant relationships. It'll separate you from church. It'll separate you from your money. It'll separate you from your friends. It'll separate you from people who got your back. If you don't separate yourself, from your distractions. Some folks like distractions. Another message, another day. But you've got to separate yourself. You've got to separate. And so that means a discipline is a must have. Somebody say discipline. Come on, it's not a curse word. Come on, somebody say discipline. You've got to have some discipline, some self-control, the ability to exercise restraint over your emotions, over your impulses, over your own desires. Discipline. And what we want is instant satisfaction. We want to be satisfied right now. Mm -hmm. But you've got to have discipline. In Proverbs 25, verse 28, Solomon says, A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. And when the walls of your life are broken down, the enemy will wreak havoc in your life. Not just your natural life, but your spiritual life. When your walls are broken down, you've got to remember ancient city walls were made as protection from the enemy. They were usually massive structures punctuated with guard towers. Some were built on hills, making it difficult for invasions, some built near the seas and water to provide protection from invaders on ship. The city walls provided protection uh, from things that shouldn't get in and things that shouldn't go out. Things that they didn't want to get into the city. The wall was there pre to prevent it from happening and the things they didn't want to get out. The walls became the limit. It became the boundaries and Solomon says a man a woman too that lacks discipline is like a city without a wall or a broken down wall and I've come across some people they are just like a city with a broken down down wall. They have no restraint. Uh, nothing, everything is right. Nothing is wrong. Oh Lord, I'm in the wrong church. I'm in the wrong church. And the Holy Spirit directed me to challenge you to develop a disciplined life. We do what we want to do. We say what we want to say and to whomever we feel it necessary to say it to. We live like we want to live. It just got quiet in here. We live like we want to live. We do any and everything we want to do because we feel like I can do it and it's right for me. You are undisciplined. If there are no no's in your own personal life, something is wrong. Oh, I'm in the wrong church. I'm in the wrong church. If you have not learned how to touch not. Oh, y'all better say amen. I feel a good old holiness preacher working. Touch not. Taste not. Handle not the unclean. Who shall ascend to the hills of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy temple? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart and have not lifted up his soul unto vanity. It just got quiet in here. We live like we want to live. We stop praying. We stop fasting. We stop witnessing. We stop studying the word of God. We are on self mode 24-7. There are dangers when the walls of your life are broken down. Even more dangerous when they don't exist at all. 
Mm -hmm. Because the enemy comes in and wreaks havoc. Sin becomes easy. Your most valuable possessions are in jeopardy. You lose uh, your security. You lose your advantage when your walls are broken down. You become as sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. You will tell people uh, you will cuss people out and then act like you did nothing wrong. Everything Thing that comes up will come out. You act like you're doing God a favor. God have mercy. You need it's quiet. Why y'all so quiet? I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. You need some discipline. Somebody say discipline. Y'all remember Joseph? Joseph had discipline when Miss Potiphar hit up on him. Her and her, her, and her cougar ways. Y'all yeah, laughing at Miss Potiphar, but some of y'all. Y'all got some cougar ways. But Joseph had, he had discipline. David had discipline when he had the prime opportunity to kill Saul. But he had discipline. They, uh, Nehemiah had discipline when he told them, I cannot come down from the wall. Jesus was in full discipline mode when he was tempted by the devil. Y'all remember cussing Peter? Y'all remember Peter? Peter swore swinging Peter. Peter said, add to your faith virtue and virtue knowledge and knowledge self-control to self-control perseverance. You need more than a gift. You need more than an anointing. You need more than a dance. You need more than a holler. You need more than a quicken. You need more than a huck and a buck. You need some self-control control you need some discipline i wish somebody would say amen in this catholic church you need some discipline i know you can run around the church i know you know how to fall out i know you know when to wave your hands i know you can speak in tongues but do you have some discipline do you have some self-control can you control yourself can you control yourself when the heat is on can you control yourself when they've gotten on all of your nerves including the last nerve can you control yourself when things ain't going your way can you control yourself when they are taking advantage of you can you do you have some self stop hollering McCoy calm down you need some discipline. Discipline is required. How do you know when you are disciplined? This is how you know. When what used to be a distraction no longer distracts you. Mm -hmm. That's when you know. You can't handle uh, uh, distractions without having discipline and to have discipline you must know how to manage three things I'll, three things I'll see how much I can get done and then I'll pick it up next week you have to have you have to have discipline you must know how to manage three things let me give them to you you've got to know how to manage your mind everybody say your mind You've got to manage your mind. Not only your mind, but you've got to be able to manage your mouth. Somebody say your mouth. I got to be able to manage my mouth. Uh-huh. Got to be able to manage my mouth. And then you've got to be able to manage your movement. You've got to be able manage what you do your movement somebody say my, your, your, your mind your mind i've got to be able you've got to be i've got to learn how to manage you have to teach and train your mind how to respond to the distractions since you can't stop all of the all of the distractions from coming your way, you have to learn and teach and train your mind how to respond to the distractions. Philippians 4 and 8 says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, 
whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, if, there, if, if it's praiseworthy, meditate or think on these things. If it does not line up with where I'm going, Stop. If it does not line up with where you're going, your dreams, your visions, your calling, your ministry, if it does not line up to that, stop thinking about it. Train your mind to let it go. You've got to train your mind. Uh, the Bible says casting down every imagination that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. You've got to begin to cast it down. Bring it all the way down. You gotta, you gotta manage, 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 manage your mind. I gotta, I gotta, man, I gotta, man. And stop, stop giving so many pieces of your mind away. Some of y'all have pieced out all of your mind. Stop giving, man, control your mind. The self control my I I control how I how I think. You ever you ever wonder why some people they will look at certain things and they always think the negative because they have conditioned their mind. Mm -hmm. they, they, you can say something to them in the purest way, but they have conditioned their mind that you don't like them. So regardless of what you say to them, it's an offense because they have conditioned their mind. They have, some people see this glass right here as half empty, while others have conditioned their mind to see it as half full. You control that. You control you. You've got to train. And how do I train my mind? I got to get in the word of God. I got to get in the word of God. I got to get in the word of God. I've got to get in the word of God. And not only do I have to manage my mind, I've got to manage my mouth. Everybody say my mouth. Not, not your mouth. My mouth. Because I don't control your mouth. I, 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 can, I control my mouth. I used to think I can control your mouth with my fist, but that, that didn't work all the time because after you dried up all of the blood, after your lip went down, you still, you kept on talking. So I had to learn how to control my mouth. Proverbs 21 says, uh, whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. Someone once said, taste your words before you spit them out. Uh huh. Some just let need to let those words marinate in your mouth before you release it. See, it's it's not it's not the question is not can I. The question is should I. And I guarantee, when you ask should I, the overwhelming response will be no. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. David prayed. He prayed in Psalm 141. He said, set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Y'all got to get in the word. Y'all got to get in Psalm 141, 3. He says, set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. My, and listen, he goes on to say, keep watch over the door of my lips. In other words, I've got to learn how to manage my mouth, especially when distractions come because you shall have whatsoever you say. So you've got to learn how, to, even when you are distracted, you've got to learn to say the right things. Manage your mouth. Some of y'all are going to be quiet the rest of the day. And you go, you go, somebody gonna say something to you. You can do like this. They gonna say, "What's wrong? I'm managing my mouth. I'm mad because if I don't manage my mouth, if I don't manage my mouth, I'm gonna say something to you. If I don't manage my mouth, I'm gonna have to come back next week and apologize to you. If I don't manage my mouth, I'm gonna cut you and I'm gonna cut you deep. If I don't manage my mouth, your mama gonna know about what I said. If I don't manage my mouth, 
If I don't manage my mouth, you're going to look at me funny. If I don't manage my mouth, you're going to have, you're going to lose all respect for me. So I got to manage my mouth. If I don't manage my mouth, you're going to be hurt. And rightfully so. I got to, I got to. Grandmama used to tell us when we were kids, everything that comes up ain't got to come out. You got to manage, 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 manage your mouth. Manage, manage your mouth. What was it years ago? They used to tell us, you know, the 10 second rule count down 10, count down 10, don't before you say 10, 9, 8, 7. Let me calm myself down. 7, 6, 5, 4, Okay, have a nice day. <laughs> Gotta manage your mouth. This is discipline. This is, a, this, is, this, this is a part of discipline. Not only do I manage my mind, how I think, how I process information, but I gotta manage my mouth, what I say out of my mouth, especially what I put on other people and what I say to other people. I gotta manage that because guess what? I'm responsible for what I say. Let me say that again. I am responsible for what I say. I am responsible for what I say. I am responsible. Not, I don't care if you are the trigger. I am responsible. I don't, it, 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 it doesn't matter if I feel justified. I'm still responsible. I got to manage some of y'all would still have some good wholesome relationship if you would have just learned to shut up learn to take one for the team and just shut up I'm going to take one for the team. I'm going to take one for the team. I'm going to take one for the team. I'm taking this for the team. I'm taking this for the team. Lord knows I'm just going to shut up. I'm just going to be quiet. And that's what we used to tell the little children. Don't say shut up. Say be quiet. Shut up. Shut up. Just, just learn to manage, manage, manage your mind. Can I give you one more? You got to be able to manage your movement. In other words, you've got to be able to manage what you do, how you move, even in the face of distractions. James 4 and 7 says this. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the devil. Some of us have to recognize the devil. We have been bewitched and been fooled and did not realize it was the devil. But James says, if you resist the devil, he will flee from you. Stop giving the devil room. You've got to recognize the devil. I, I, I recognize. Uh, I, I, I recognize what you just said. What you just did. I recognize that these. Are distra All right. So <clears throat> the other day, in fact, it was yesterday. I just got finished working. You know, finishing up some last-minute things on um, on my, on the message today. You know. And I said, okay, so I was, Devin, I was, I was on my way upstairs. I said, um, I need, a, I need an 800. I need an 800. Amanda, I need, you know what I'm talking about. I need an 800. Went upstairs, so I'm on my way upstairs. Need a, need an 800. Need you know, some, some, some relief. Need an 800. And on my way, on my way, on my way, my, my phone was upstairs, and um, I sat on the side of my phone, and I grabbed my phone. And I opened up, I can't remember what it, what it was. I think I, it, may, it may have been one of the social media. An hour had went by. <laughs> Elder Kennedy, an hour 
a complete hour had went by. A whole hour. I got distracted. I got distracted for a whole hour. And I did not realize until afterwards that it was the devil taking me away from my attention on distractions. The devil is cunning. He's sneaky. I just innocently grabbed my phone because it was upstairs. I was going back down to my office one, and I grabbed, I'm going to get this 800. And it was an hour later that I got the 800. I didn't even make it to the medicine cabinet to get my 800. Oh, we've got to recognize when it is the devil. So it extends. Extended when I came to, I realized I was in more pain. When I came to myself, but we've got to recognize the devil, and then not only do you've got to recognize the devil, you've got to rebuke the devil. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Oh, we don't talk like grandmama used to talk. I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. The blood of Jesus, you've got to rebuke. Satan, get thee behind me. And you have to resist the devil. In other words, you take up the authority over your own movement, your own actions when distractions come your way. This is the process. Because you've got to have... In order to handle the distractions, you've got to be able to have discipline. You can't, you can't handle distractions if you haven't managed discipline. You can't handle, you, 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 you gotta, man, you gotta, you gotta be able to have some discipline. You've gotta be able to manage your mind, manage your mouth, manage your movement if you're gonna handle distractions, all right? All right, I promise I'll pick this up. I'm closing, I'll pick this up next week. But next week, next week, next week, the Lord said the same thing. I'm gonna really deal, deal with how do we handle these distractions? How do we handle the distractions? Because Solomon gives us some, some insight. He gives us some insight. It, it was right in the text that we read, and we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it next. We'll talk about it next week, I promise. He gives it. It's right there. It's right there in the text. Go back and read the text, and y'all be y'all will be ready for me. It's right there in the text. Yeah, all right. So let me let me. I won't talk about. It, I just give it to you. Let me let me let me just give it to you. Let me give it to you. Look, 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 look what he said, McCoy. You can't talk about. It. You can't talk about it. You got to say because you don't have time. You don't have time. He says, look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. <laughs> Some of y'all looking in the wrong direction. You're looking in the wrong direction. He says, look straight ahead. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. The, the, the other thing he says, the other thing he says, he says, he says, he says, mark out a straight pathway for your feet, your vision, and stay on the pathway. Stay on the pathway. Stay on. You got to mark it out. You got to mark it out where I'm going, and I got to stay on this pathway. And if something comes to distract me, to take me away from that, uh, that's a distraction and not an interruption. Uh huh, and then he says, "Keep your feet from following evil." And I'll talk about it next. What's evil? Everything that doesn't line up with my vision. You can't die. Oh, yes, I will. You can't die. You can't die.